stand tonight. Hallelujah. It's so good to be in God's house. I feel like it's like a refresh, a midweek refresh. Hallelujah, Jesus. Welcome, church. Welcome, Facebook, church. Just here to worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you tonight, God. We invite your presence, your spirit to come and be with us tonight, God. Your word says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. We are free in the spirit tonight, Jesus. We are looking for you to move in our lives and to move in the lives of our brothers and sisters, Jesus. We're believing for the miraculous, Jesus. We're believing for your peace to come, your joy to come, and your love, God. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's worship him tonight. Tis so sweet to trust.
one of those songs. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I want to trust you more, Lord God. You did so much for me. Hallelujah, Lord God. Glory to your name, Lord God. Oh, Lord, it's just great to be in your house tonight, Lord God. Oh, Lord, that we could come and just give you some praise, Lord God. Lord, that we could lift our hands, Lord God, and thank the God who, who saved us, who gave us life. Oh, glory to your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord God. Isn't he good? Yo, he is so good. And I just uh, appreciate the Lord. I just I appreciate what he's doing in my life. He's changing me, you know? And it's like, you can be saved, I don't care how long. And it's like, he's still changing me. And, uh, and, it's, and it's a beautiful thing. And, and that's what he wants to do for every one of us. And... That's great. And I, I was thinking of something uh, on my, actually earlier today. And um, do you ever doubt that God, you ever doubt God or see something in church and kind of wonder, is it real? <laughs> okay, just, I'm serious. Well, anyway, I used to really question getting slain out because it never happened to me. And um, I'd see people get slain out. I'm wondering, well, are they just letting themselves go down? Or how is this, how is this working? Okay? Now, so one service, I was minding my own business. I was standing right here, and I was just praising the Lord. And um, Sister Saunders came over, and she just touch the top of my head and boom down I went it's real folks <laughs> it's, <laughs> I just thought that was uh, just a thing that you know sometimes you just wonder you just wonder you get a question in your mind but um, God has a way of answering those questions for you and uh, maybe tonight in something that's said as we go into God's word he'll answer some questions for you and I, and I pray that that's what he'll do. We'll just uh, look to God. Jesus, we just thank you, Lord God, for your goodness, Lord. And Lord Jesus, I just pray, Lord God, you just help me tonight, Lord God. It's only by your anointing, Lord, that your word is quickened to hearts, Lord God. And Lord, I just pray you just touch every heart, Lord, that you save, Lord God, that you heal, that you fill people with the Holy Ghost tonight, Lord God. Just have your way in this service, and we'll thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. But um, we're going to continue tonight um, from where we were last week on Lord Send the Rain, but I just wanted to uh, say a couple things before we get into it, and I know I said a couple things about revivals last week. I just, you know what, I just want to kind of put that in there where it's on our mind where it's in our heart where it becomes like part of our prayer because our world is in desperate need of a re of revival and um one of the things i i know i mentioned a couple great revivals last week and um and you know and there's other revivals and the thing about a revival is it's um like evangelistic meetings you know People get help. They get uh, go on with God, but something about a revival it uh, it brings an awareness of God to the community, and in some of the revivals that you know I was reading about the great revivals that's happened in the past, there were some uh, really I I say the really cool things that God was doing, and and I'm talking about that people would be walking down the street and just start calling out for God to forgive them of their sins and, uh, and falling out under the power of God, just shaking. People in bars 
in, in, where, in towns where these revivals were taking place. It, sitting in a bar and just, just had that conviction of God just hit their heart and start crying out for God to forgive them. And, and some of these people, they'd be laying on the sidewalks in the street. And it, I was reading the account and how they'd ha- they'd, the police uh, and, the, uh, and the people would run to get a minister, to get somebody to help, to pray, and uh, to pray for these people. And, and whenever a revival would happen, it's like crime would go down. Um, that God awareness that just, uh, it just, it just moved through the community. It became the talk of town. It was like the newspapers might not, it, I read in one account, it said, you know, um, the newspaper always had just a little short thing about church, but all the sports and everything was on there. But when these revivals were taking place, it's what the people wanted to hear about, and they had to put it in the paper. And, uh, and I just, God can do it again. He can do it again, and he is doing it. He's doing it, but I'd like to see that kind of scale where our towns, our communities changed, you know, our, your communities change. We don't all live in the same town. But, um, but just the, and revival starts with me and you. And, uh, and I, just, uh, I, I just have that desire. I think we all have that desire that God moves in that way. And I know uh, Sunday morning, uh, Sister Adrian was ministering. She was talking about how they took the word sin out of a dictionary, I think it was a children's dictionary, and and they were just they're they're looking to take away that awareness, that awareness of God, and and if it and if it's our job as the church to bring that God awareness to our communities, you know, when we're on the street, when uh, in our neighborhoods and our schools and our workplaces. And, uh, and God, God's going to move. There's an end-time revival. And it happens. It's happening. It's happening. It are, people are coming to church. There's, I, I, see in, I see more people in church than there was a month ago. And, it, and praise the Lord, it's, gr- it's a great thing. But um, we're going to... Um, it says in um, Ephesians 6, 11 and 12, it says this. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. That Holy Spirit we're going to talk about tonight will help you immensely in this area. And it says, Put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For, and here's the battle. It's not flesh and blood. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And, um, you know, that's a, a little tangent. But we're going to go back to the book of Joel in uh, chapter 23. Oops. Chapter 2. If you can find the 23rd chapter, Joel, you're doing a lot better than me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I might not. I might be just a little bit nervous, maybe, but uh, that's okay. Um, but in, in uh, chapter 2, verse 23, it says this, and that's we, we read this last week. It says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And um, 
and we kind of covered that last week, and, um, and we do have a right to rejoice. And uh, when God, like I said, when God tells us to be happy, we can be happy. We know he's going to do something good. And, uh, and he did. And the people of, of Israel, they were doing really poorly. They were backslidden. God brought judgment on them. That's, um, they, uh, and there was a call through Joel the prophet to come to a place of repentance, to turn their lives. He said, you know, rend your heart and not your garment. You know, you know, to come back to the Lord. And the Lord in his mercy, he's coming back here and he's saying, you know, he's, he's saying, look, you know, for you, the children of Zion, those that have come back to me, he's saying, Look, he, he was going to send that rain. He was going to send the rains again. We talked last week about how them rains was crucial for them people. Um, they're crucial for us. <laughs> the rains are crucial for us, but they were crucial for them people because they would have no crops without the rain. It was dry six months, wet six months. If there was no rain at the time of planting, you're throwing seed in the dust bowl. It was, uh, it, was, it was pretty bad. And, um, and so he said he'd return that rain, and he said, uh, I'm going to send that rain. He says the latter and the former rain together. And uh, in other words, a, and it was going to be a great blessing, and it says the floor shall be full of wheat and the fat shall overflow. And the thing about God, and he's a restorer. I, don't, I, I stand here t- tonight, I'm... I've been restored. I've been through some really dry places, uh, not just when I first gave my heart to Christ, but on my walk with God. I had some some times where my I was real dry and really hurting. And uh, and God is He's a restorer. I can tell you. And um, and we're gonna move on, and uh, and we're gonna talk and. Uh, it's just beautiful how much God loves us. You know, to send the rain, you know, uh, he withheld the rain at times. And what father doesn't correct their kids? <clears throat> Love corrects. Love caused them to turn back, you know, that to that point where they turn back to God and and what did he do when he turned back? He sent the rain, and he just brought that blessing again. And it's just like, um, like our life, where Jesus brings that, that blessing to our life. Um, we come back to God. We let things take us out. We talked a little bit about that last week. And um, when we turn back to him, he sends that rain, you know, to bring that blessing back to our life. And uh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that. Because where where would we be <laughs> without without God's love and that that mercy, that patience He has with us um, to to just take that, do that for us. Um, I find my spot here. So tonight I want to concentrate more on on verses 28. Well, I want to start with verses 28, 29, and and probably stay there a bit. And, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your Young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids. In those days will I pour out my spirit. Now this part of the prophecy began to come to pass on the day of Pentecost, and we know that, most of us here. And, but, um, and it's still, God is still pouring out his spirit today. And I want to take some time to talk about this, and I want you to know that 
You know what the greatest outpouring of the Spirit of God is? When it happens to you. Amen? When God pours out his Spirit on you. I remember the day I was filled with the Holy Ghost. I, I say it all the time. Um, standing by the sanctuary doors. I, I know I said it last week. I'm going to say it again. Uh, in a little church in Putnam, Connecticut, with a youth leaders that said, you got saved, you got to have the Holy Ghost. They were good youth leaders. They knew that if we were going to make it, we needed that Holy Ghost. And so by the sanctuary doors, I didn't have the Holy Ghost, but I knew it was important. And I was, we were praying for each other, and I was praying for somebody else, and God filled me. And, and that's sometimes how it is as we start to give out. But just God wants to fill us with his Holy Spirit. Now, I've seen very young children filled with the Holy Spirit right here at the altar. Three, four years old. <laughs> and I haven't seen it in a, little, in a while. But you know what? I want to see that come back. You know, in, in the day we live, we need the Spirit of God. Like my youth leader told me back then, you, you got saved? Well, you're going to need the Spirit of God. You're going to need God's power to, to walk a victorious life, to, to walk with Jesus. You're going to stay on that road with Jesus. You need his Holy Ghost. So that was one of the greatest blessings of my life after I gave my life to Jesus. And I'll say it's a necessity. Once a person gives their life to Jesus that, and we're born again, we're saved, we ask Jesus in our heart, we, we start that walk with him, that we, that we do that, that we seek God for his Holy Ghost. And how important is it? I want to read and talk about some scriptures to help us understand, to help us that our, to try to whet that desire. Because one thing I know is I've never seen anybody filled with the Holy Ghost that didn't want it. Nobody, nobody's seen anybody filled with the Holy Ghost that didn't want it. How about you, Reverend Sanchez? You get around. <laughs> you ever see anybody filled with the Holy Ghost didn't want it? No, no, don't, not happening. So what I want to do is I want to bring you some scriptures. I want you to see the value in, in being filled with, it, with the Holy Ghost so that you begin to desire it. I want your desire to grow until you can't go on without it. You know what? You get hooked on, you can get hooked on candy and some certain candy, and it's like, man, you got to have it. Well, the Holy Ghost is better than any candy you ever had, and it's going to do some more for you than that candy too. It's not going to make you fat and lazy. It's gonna, it's gonna give you, it's gonna put some, it's gonna put some pep in your step, and you're gonna be able to do the work of God because that's what He came to help us do. So, anyhow, so first of all, how important was it? It was prophesied of Joel hundreds of years before Jesus ever even was born. Second, I thought this was really amazing in that even though the disciples had been taught by Jesus in person for three years, right? What did Jesus tell them? He says, Terry, wait in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Jesus loved those disciples. He taught them. They went out from him. They healed the sick. They cast out devils, right? But Jesus is going to go now, and he says, well, you know, it, I have to go. It's expedient that I go, that you can have the Spirit of God, because I'm going to send you something that you need. And that is God's love for us, that he did not want his disciples going out not equipped. He wanted them to have the tools they needed to do the job. He, they wanted him... 
He, they, he wanted them disciples to go out with confidence. And that could only come from that Holy Ghost and power. There was going to be battles. And when you read in the Bible, read at Paul and see some of the things they went through, he needed more than, he, he needed the Holy Ghost and power. So, um, the last thing Jesus told the disciples before being received up into heaven, it's in Acts 1.8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. And uh, I'm just going to go into some other scriptures here. But if you look in John 13, what happens there is the Last Supper. And Jesus is beginning to prepare his disciples. He's going to be, he's, he's telling them, I'm going to be go. I'm not going to be with you anymore. And, and you know, and that's hard news for the disciples to take. Um, let me tell you, um, because they loved Jesus with all their heart. They uh, followed him every day. They saw the miracles. They saw the thousands being, being fed from, a, you know, a few loaves and some fish few fishes and um, and it's like he starts he starts to talk to him I'm, I'm I've got I'm gonna be going but then as he goes through that you go into like four, chapter 14 to 16 in the book of John and you see a lot of examples of where he starts talking to them about sending the comforter now in John 14, 15 to 18, it says this, If you love me, keep my commandments. And, you know, do you know that that never really has changed through the Bible? <laughs> you know, a lot of people say, well, it's a law, church. Anyway, but you know that following the commandments thing is kind of a good thing, and it really does help. It's, and, you know, and there is a place you can walk with the Spirit of God where there is no law. But we'll get there. Um, and that, how many want a place to walk where there is no law? Okay, I see some hands going up. Well, you, you know what? You can, when you walk in the Spirit of God, uh, there is no law. No law. You know why? Whose spirit is it that you're receiving in you? It's the spirit of who? Jesus, right? You're getting his spirit in, and Jesus is what? The word, right? So he will never have you do anything that is contrary to the word of God. So there's no law. If I'm walking in that spirit, and, and you know what? If this makes you desire, this is truth. So if you, if you walk in that spirit of God, there is no law. And if you do start doing something that is contrary to what the Bible says, you're not in the Spirit. You're a hunk of flesh. It's flesh. It's not God. Okay? So that's, I know that part is a little bit of a downer. Um, but it's the truth. God, you can walk in the Spirit. It's, a, it's the place to walk. If you're walking in the Spirit... There's liberty in the spirit. They said that during song service. There is, there is everything. But I'm way, getting way out here. John 14, 15 to 18. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I want you to note there, when Jesus was with them, that whole, the Holy Spirit, and this is the thing with a, a lot of um, places that don't believe with the infilling, there's, there's still a spirit of God. You can't erase him. He's there. He's there's God the Father. There's Jesus. 
there's the Holy Spirit. But it says, for he dwelleth with you. But when you get that baptism of the Holy Ghost, what he was telling them about, and shall be in you, there's a difference. I won't leave you comfortless. I'll come to you. So how many here like a comforter? Oh, boy, I see a lot of hands going up. You know what? Comforters are pretty nice, right? They're warm. They make you feel secure. Nowadays, you can get weighted blankets to make you feel more secure. But, um, well, the word comforter in the original language of the Bible means something even better than that blanket. It means one who is called to someone's aid. That comforter, it means, hey, it's your helper. It's your helper. Who is it that's helping you? It's that Holy Spirit. It's Jesus in you that's helping you. He says, so I will not leave you comfortless. No, because I'm there to aid you with everything that you go through. How many looking for somebody that just looking for a little help along the way? You want that Holy Ghost in power because that is one of the things that he's to do now how about in school you ever need a comforter you ever need someone to stand up beside you yes i see some hands that's true whether you're in the workplace on the streets in our <laughs> in our land crazy place to be isn't it i like that to know that the holy ghost is there and i can tell you if you do get in a wreck god can have grace for that too so, so, so it's really great. I would tell you how to spell that word in the original, but it was all Greek to me. <laughs> it's, that's a bad joke. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it was Greek. <laughs> Anyhow, it's Jesus' spirit right inside of us that's there to help us, whatever we go through. Now, many Christians know the Holy Spirit is with them, but never realize they can have that, that spirit of God, that baptism in the spirit that we're talking about, and have them in them. And, and it's not just a great experience. Um, I've tell you, I've never been really touched by the Holy Ghost and left sad, okay? It's a definite upper. Um, a lot of times I've left getting a real touch from the, of the Holy Ghost and uh, had a better outlook, a better attitude. It's a, God, it's a great attitude um, adjuster, um, so if you need that in your life, and sometimes, sometimes I need an attitude adjuster in my life. Just, I'm just saying, I have my wife sitting right here. I can't really, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> but it's true. Sometimes I need my attitude adjusted. Well, the Holy Ghost will help you with that too. Now, when we're talking about this, I, I was reading a book, and it had this great example in it. It was um, the book, They Speak With Other Tongues, by John Sherrill. And, and they, this one man in here who was, like, big in, um, like, world Pentecostal association. I don't know exactly what it, what it was. I didn't really dig into that. But he, was at, he went to a major denomination, and he was t trying to explain to them about the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Okay? And here, I think, I love the example he used. And what was happening, he's telling them about it. And they kind of put him on the line. How many knows, like, when Jesus walked on the earth, they always tried to catch him? Right? And what he said. And he, this was a catch you in what you're saying moment for this man. And this man is Holy Ghost filled. He's Pentecostal. He's telling them about how it is. And um, so he's with this group of ministers, and they ask him the question and say, Are you telling us that you Pentecostals, and a Pentecostal, if you're not familiar, is someone who believes in the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues? They're saying, Are you telling us that you Pentecostals have the truth and we other churches don't? 
Hmm, that's fighting words, right? Listen to this answer. <laughs> it's just, this is, a, this is great. So I know that he had a comforter to stand up inside him to help him with this. Because what it says is he's, he prayed really quick. He knew, he knew he had to answer this in a good way. And here's what he said. He says, we both have the truth, he said. You know, when my wife and I, and he's from Africa, moved to America, we bought a marvelous device called a deep freeze. And there we keep some rather fine Texas beef. Now my wife can take one of those steaks out and lay it frozen solid on the table. It's steak, all right, no question about that. You and I can sit around, we can analyze it, we can discuss its lineage, its age, what part of the steer it's from. We can weigh it, list all its nutritive values. But if my wife puts that steak on the fire, something different begins to happen. And uh, my little boy smells it way out in the yard and comes shouting, Gee, Mom, that smells good. I want some. Gentlemen, he said, that is the difference between our ways of handling the same truth. You have yours on ice. We have ours on fire. <laughs> truth? But truth? It's, it's the truth. Ours, it's living inside us. It's it's alive, it's reverberating, it's helping us in everything that we go to do. This is something that you can't live without. That's how we live that overcoming life. It's that power of the Holy Ghost inside us. So, got some other scriptures. And here's one, 14, John 14, 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to re your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, Jesus uh, will help you to remember things he said to you. I find so many times, and this is true, like, you know, and I know that you can relate to this, like uh, ministering in a convalescent home, it's how like scriptures just kind of come to you a lot of times when you're teaching. Them scriptures come back. They come back to your remembrance. That's the Holy Ghost. One of the jobs the Holy Ghost does. And now every wisdomer out here is going to help you remember? Did you catch that? Come on now. I mean, and I really can't say that because um, my mother, when I was in my 20s, my mother always got on me because why are you so forgetful? You're in your 20s. What in the world are you going to do when you get older? And I'll tell you, keep the Holy Ghost alive in my life. I won't probably help me remember everything, but what the things I really need to, he's there to help me. So that's, that's a great thing too. That's just that's another thing that, that the Holy Spirit will help you with. Um, and how about Romans 8, 26 to 27? Boy, I, I, love, I just love these. I'm, I could not go through, I'm not going to go through all of the Bible. There's hundreds of verses. There's over 100 verses. Easy on the Holy Ghost. But this says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. How many have a weak place maybe in their life? <laughs> Are my hands up? Wait. Um, I need both of them on that one. I have weak places in my life, and I can, I gotta say, I said God is changing me. He's helping me with some of those weak places. And, and I'm, I am thrilled that He's helping me. And, uh, cause that is something I really, uh, want, wanted from God. And it says, for we, it says, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. How many times 
do we pray and we do not know how to pray for a situation? <laughs> a lot. A lot. A, you pray for somebody for healing. I don't know what's wrong with them, but the spirit that prays through you, when you're praying in the spirit, it's Jesus praying through you, and he knows all things. He will pray according to the will of God for that situation that, that you're praying to him about. I don't know how to pray about a lot of situations, but you know what? I can pray in the Spirit. And, and when I'm praying in the Spirit, He's taking care of that thing that's a burden on my heart. Because you know what? If it's a burden on my heart, it's a, I'm sure it's a burden on the heart of the Lord too. So, and that's a beautiful thing. And uh, so he helps us in our weak places and, uh, and, and, uh, and helps us in praying when we pray. I know um, Jude, I want to go to, Jude 20, and it says this, But ye, be, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. But you know, when God comes back, what did he say he's going to look for? Well, I find faith. And when I pray in the Holy Ghost, it builds me up in my most holy faith. And you know what? My faith and trust in God grows when I am praying in the Holy Ghost. And I found, and I don't know if you're supposed to do this or not, so, but it works for me. But I find even in my silent praying, I find myself, I'm praying in tongues. You know what? And, and I thought about it, and it's like Paul said that he prayed in, in the Spirit more than everybody else. He said, I pray more than you all. I pray in the Holy Ghost. Well, I don't know. Oh, I don't think he was just talking, talking out loud all the time. But, but even in his silent prayer, that, that he was letting that Holy Ghost just, just flow in his life. So I just, I need the faith. I need my faith built up. I need, you know what? That's what's going to keep me. That's why is the Holy Ghost so important? Can you see? I'm only listing a, a few things that the Holy Ghost wants to do in each and every one of our lives. You know, I have gone through parts in my own life where I'd let that Holy Ghost in me kind of go dormant, you know. But what does the Bible say about that? Stir up the gift that lies within you. You know, if there's something keeping you, if there's something keeping you from really uh, praying in the Spirit of God, from that Spirit of God flowing, you know, when you turn from that thing that's pulling you away and you turn to Christ and, start, and give Him the praise, give Him the glory, He will refill your life. He will that he can stir up that gift that lies within you. So now it says this. Um, so the disciples did what did they do? Just like Jesus said, when Jesus passed, he rose again from the dead. He's taken up into heaven. We just had to, went through a whole lot right there, and uh, and the disciples went to Jerusalem just like they were told. And it says this in chapter 2, And when the day of Pentecost, of Acts, uh, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mushing, uh, rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. When I was thinking about this passage, I was thinking about, you ever, you ever in the summer, hot day, and, uh, and you can see the storms coming. 
and it's like you can see the clouds getting closer. But you know when it's going to rain when what happens, all of a sudden you feel you can see the, the wind. Whoosh! And then what happens? Usually, not long after that, whoosh! <laughs> it begins to pour. <clears throat> and that's what, you know, God wants to do in each and every one of our lives. He wants to fill us with his Holy Spirit. And, uh, and tonight, you know, I remember, I, there's people right here that, you, that have been carried out of here at the end of services. How many? <laughs> I see hands going up. People that, you know what, and you know what they, they were doing? One, one young person would come down, and what would happen? You'd have a lot of other concerned young people start to go over and begin to pray. And what happened? Oh, my goodness. The Holy Spirit was there. They were desiring. They wanted God to touch them. One, it would, it would start with one person getting prayer, and it would go to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. You guys, elders, you remember those days, right? And, and you know, and some of them, they would be carried out still speaking in other tongues. And, like I, and I wasn't kidding what I said. Even kids as young as like uh, four and five years old sometimes that, were, that would get filled with the Spirit of God. But I, I would just want to do one more scripture and uh, then we'll close. And, but it says this in Acts 2.38 and 39, it says... Then Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And you know, I, um, it says, so one, what comes when we come to Christ? It's repentance. We turn from our way in the world. We turn to Christ. And he forgives us. He died on that cross to, for, you know, for, uh, to pay the price for our sins. Then it tells us that we should go on with him in water baptism. And, then we, and, and when we do, we have that promise of the Holy Ghost. But I want to tell you that God is sovereign. He's the boss, and, and he, I, I got filled with the Holy Ghost before I got water baptized. How many here? I, there's a lot of hands on that. So if you, and I want to uh, bring that out to you today, you know, um, to get a fresh touch from God if, if you've been dry. You know, I, I saw uh, probably a YouTube or a, a show, but what they did is, you might be in a really barren place. You might feel like it's a desert in your life. And how many um, ever been like near a desert? It's like hardly nothing grows, and it's uh, hot. It's uncomfortable. And uh, but if you could see the desert after one shower, it comes to life. That's what Jesus wants to do. For you tonight he wants to bring you to life and uh and i just really want to encourage you if you don't have the holy ghost and and you know and sometimes i know there's sometimes people that have sought for the holy ghost for a long time and sometimes it's not a matter of sin but it's coming to that place of surrender sometimes i i think sometimes it's a mental block of control of the tongue, and you got to speak to that thing <laughs> to be released. Really, release that tongue to to just move out in the Holy Ghost. But um, but uh, but tonight, if you're here, if you're on Facebook watching, um, whatever the case, and and you've never asked Jesus into your life, it's. It's been 46, 47 years for me, and it's something I have never regret. Through the valleys, 
through the high places, through the hard times, I would n I never regret. Jesus changed my life. You know, I was that hopeless, one of those hopeless cases that was sung about in song service. And Jesus, when he came in, he immediately, some things changed immediately. Some things was over time. And, you know, and as we walk with God, there's, and we draw closer to him, he keeps changing us, doesn't he? He, help, he keeps helping us, keeps us moving forward, keeps us dealing with those things that draw us back. But Jesus wants, he wants, he loves you. And uh, if you've never asked him in your heart, I just want to encourage you. You can come down. Our ushers can come, uh, our music ministry. And there will be someone here to pray with you. I'm sure there would be someone here that would walk down with you to this altar. But it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. And if, and if you need that rain, you need that Holy Ghost rain, you need that infilling of the Spirit of God, I want to encourage you, come down tonight. Come down tonight and uh, determined, desiring, God, I need this. It is a, and it's a crucial part in your walk with God, getting that power. You can, you can go around with heavy-duty double A's, or you can have lithium. You, want, you, want the, you need the power of God in your life. That's above lithium. He, he wants to fill you. He wants to help you. That's his love for you. The same love that he had for his disciples that he didn't want them to go out without having that Holy Ghost. He didn't want, he, he said, you wait, I'm going to fill you. So if that's you tonight, or if you haven't spoken tongues in a really long time, come down. Let God touch your life. As you yield to him, just let him touch your life. You'll never regret it. We could all just come and gather around.
and get one for her. For it's okay to go over and help if it's okay with your mom and dad.
the fire fall. Heal us one and all. for the Holy Ghost and you know don't give up keep it going how many have started how many here you started seeking for the Holy Ghost you went home and still seeking the Holy Ghost and God filled you I, I, I know I know there's people so you know what keep that alive just keep seeking he will fill you it's a promise and and you know what sunday is water baptism so, so and don't forget that sunday morning you know uh we're it's uh I, yeah it's this week so that's a great and that's a great thing and and if you haven't been baptized that's something you want to be thinking about so God bless you all and have a great week. Stay under the rain. <laughs> it's a good place to be. Keep the Holy Ghost alive in your, in, in your life. Have a great week.